Welcome to another episode of Crime Scene X. Today's video will cover three horrifying true horror stories. If you enjoy, leave a like, comment down below, subscribe for more videos. Sit back and enjoy today's video. One chilly night, I was driving alone on a road that was far from any town when suddenly my car stopped working. It just wouldn't start again no matter how much I tried. I was in the middle of nowhere with no cell service to call for help. Feeling a bit scared, but knowing I couldn't just stay in the car, I decided to walk to find someone who could help me. The road was surrounded by thick, dark forests that made it hard to see anything. Every little noise made me think something was moving in the darkness. I kept telling myself it was just animals or the wind, but it didn't make me feel much better. After what felt like a really long time walking, I saw a light through the trees. Hoping it was a house where I could find help, I walked towards it. The light was coming from an old cabin that looked like it hadn't been taken care of in years. The paint was peeling, and some of the windows were broken. I knocked on the door, feeling nervous but hopeful. A man opened the door, and right away, I felt something wasn't right. He was very thin, with deep, tired eyes, and he seemed nervous, or maybe even a bit scared himself. He let me inside to use his phone, but when I tried it, there was no dial tone. It was dead. When I turned around to tell him the phone wasn't working, I noticed we weren't alone. In the dim light, I could see figures moving in the shadows. My heart started racing as I realized these people weren't here to help me. They had something terrible in mind. Before I could react, they grabbed me and tied me up. They seemed excited, talking to each other in low voices as they got ready to hurt me. I couldn't believe this was happening. They didn't want money or anything from me. They seemed to enjoy causing pain for no reason. That night was the longest and most terrifying night of my life. They did awful things, laughing and enjoying my fear and pain. I had never felt so helpless and scared. It wasn't just the physical pain that hurt. It was knowing that these people could be so cruel for no reason. Somehow, when the first light of dawn came, they got careless, and I saw a chance to escape. I ran as fast as I could into the woods, not looking back, driven by a desperate need to get away. I didn't stop running until I found a road and eventually, someone who stopped and took me to safety. The doctors fixed my injuries, but the scars from that night, the ones inside, haven't gone away. I keep thinking about how those men were just ordinary people, but they chose to do such evil things. The police tried to find them, but the cabin was empty when they got there, as if those men had just vanished. Now I know the real horror isn't from ghosts or monsters in stories, it's the bad things that real people can do. And what scares me the most is knowing they are still out there, maybe looking for someone else. That night changed me. I'm more cautious now, always aware of how quickly things can turn dangerous, not because of supernatural beings, but because of what people can do to each other. I got a job at an old hospital in the countryside, thinking it would be a quiet place to work. It was my first night shift, and the building was much creepier in the dark. The lights flickered, and the long hallways seemed to stretch forever. I tried to stay calm, telling myself it was just an old building making noises. Around midnight, I heard a call for help coming from one of the rooms. I rushed over, thinking someone needed medical attention. When I opened the door, the room was empty, but the window was open, and the cold night air was blowing the curtains. I felt a chill down my spine, wondering who had called out. I closed the window and headed back to the nurse's station trying to shake off the feeling that something was wrong. Then the lights went out. The backup generator should have kicked in, but it didn't. I used my phone's flashlight to see, and that's when I heard footsteps coming towards me, slow and heavy. I called out thinking it might be a doctor or another nurse, but there was no answer. The footsteps stopped, and I heard heavy breathing just a few feet away. I pointed my light in the direction of the sound, but there was no one there. My heart was racing, and I didn't know what to do. Suddenly a hand grabbed my shoulder. I screamed and turned around but again there was nobody. I decided to make a run for the exit, but every door I tried was locked. I was trapped. The footsteps started again, chasing me down the hallways. I could barely breathe, running and trying every door, desperate to get out. I finally found a door that was open, leading to the basement. I didn't want to go down there, but I had no choice. The basement was dark, and the air felt thick. I could hear the sound of water dripping, 
and the footsteps still following me. I hid behind some old equipment, trying to quiet my breathing. Then, everything went silent. No footsteps, no breathing, just the sound of my heart pounding. I waited for what felt like hours until I saw the faint light of dawn through the small basement windows. I gathered my courage and made my way back upstairs, finding the doors unlocked and the lights back on. I left the hospital and never went back. They called me, asking why I didn't finish my shift but I couldn't explain. How could I tell them about the footsteps, the breathing, and the feeling of being chased by someone I could never see? I just knew I couldn't face going back into that building, not after that night. I started a new job in a small, quiet town. The job was great, but I had to work late nights often. I didn't mind at first, the streets were empty and the silence was peaceful. But then, I started noticing something odd during my walks home. One night I saw a shadow move quickly behind me. I turned around, but there was nothing. I thought my mind was playing tricks on me because I was tired, but it kept happening, night after night. Sometimes I would hear footsteps following me, but when I looked back, the street was empty. I tried to convince myself it was just the wind or some stray animal, but deep down I knew it wasn't. The feeling of being watched grew stronger. I started taking different routes home, but it didn't matter. The shadow was always there, lurking just out of sight. Then, one night, things got worse. I heard the footsteps again, but this time they were faster, like someone was running towards me. I panicked and ran, not stopping until I reached my door. I locked it behind me and peeked through the window. I saw a figure standing across the street, just staring at my house. I couldn't make out their face, but I could feel their eyes on me. I didn't sleep that night. The next day I decided to confront my fear. I walked the same route home, but this time I stopped and turned around to face whoever was following me. There was nobody there. I felt silly, thinking maybe I had let my imagination get the best of me. But when I turned back around, I bumped into someone. It was a man, wearing a hood that covered most of his face. He didn't say anything, he just stared at me. His eyes were cold and emotionless. I felt a chill run down my spine. I mumbled an apology and quickly walked around him. When I got home, I found a note pinned to my door. It just said, I see you. My heart stopped. This wasn't my imagination. Someone was stalking me. I called the police, but they couldn't do much without more evidence. I was too scared to go back outside at night. I felt trapped in my own home, constantly looking over my shoulder, jumping at every little sound. Weeks passed and the stalking continued. Notes appeared regularly, each one more threatening than the last. I installed security cameras, but they were vandalized. I felt like I was losing my mind. The stalker was always one step ahead of me, invisible yet omnipresent. Then one evening I came home to find my front door open. The house was dark. I knew I had locked it that morning. I called out, but there was no answer. I stepped inside, and the door slammed shut behind me. I tried to open it, but it was locked from the outside. I was trapped. The lights flickered on, and I saw him standing there, the man in the hood, holding a knife. He didn't want to hide anymore. He wanted me to see him, to know who he was before it was too late. I don't know how, but I managed to escape that night. I ran until I found help. The police finally caught him. He was someone from my neighborhood, someone I passed by every day and never noticed. He had been watching me since I moved in, waiting for the right moment to make his move. I moved away after that, but the fear never left me. I'm always looking over my shoulder, afraid of shadows, afraid of being followed. Thanks for watching. See you all next time.